Hello everyone. I'm Sean. This is who? We are the Courageous Knights. So uh, we're gonna start again with you for the movie news. Ah uh, yes, yeah. I don't have too much on there. I believe you have a little bit more movie news than I do. So I guess uh, I guess we'll start off with there was an interview with uh, Sylvester Stallone pretty recently, and someone asked about. What would it take for him to make another Rambo movie, or where they're going? Or he's thinking about doing another Rambo movie at all? But he said that I guess his quote was, "It's either going to be a streaming prequel or nothing at all." <laughs> so I guess he really wants to go back to like sixteen, seventeen-year-old John Rambo. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't use him as the actor, but maybe they will <laughs> DH him down like, as like <laughs> eighty-year-old Stallone as a high school student. Yeah, you know, like some of those movies where they have like an obvious forty-year-old person writing the script for like sixteen-year-old girls or like yeah, the lingo. <laughs> so maybe that's what maybe that's what he's thinking of as Sylvester Stallone wants to be a sixteen-year-old great kid. They should do it entirely <laughs> in the graphic style of Mortal Kombat Eleven. Yeah, so they should do that. <laughs> Maybe that's his life when he was 16 year old. He fought, like, Scorpion or something. Exactly. <laughs> well, I guess, a, I guess a prequel could work, though. I could I could see a prequel working for John Rambo. Yeah, it could that's work. that's something different. Maybe that's his life before it became the grizzled veteran he is. The grizzled drifter veteran, I guess. Yes. Before he stumbled upon Jerkwater, USA. Yes, exactly. <laughs> blowing everything up but yeah i i don't think stallone himself would be starring as rambo but he could be like yeah. the writer or showrunner or director or something yeah I, I think he did say something he was like he was thinking maybe just like uh casting an actor or something to do for john rambo which would only make sense that he would do that but yeah maybe do maybe maybe the writer because he is he's basically didn't he like write every movie pretty much yeah, he's usually involved in the creative process. Like, he wrote yeah, and directed Rocky, and pretty sure he's written and directed possibly the last couple Rambo movies. So. Yeah. Well, they all, they've all been pretty decent, so I can see this being a pretty decent show. Mm -hmm. At least at least a streaming show. Okay, so the next one I have is uh, apparently the Snyder Cut. Zack Snyder said, I guess, the new additional researched footage has been, like, yeah, he goes out to, like, about four minutes of new additional footage to the Snyder Cut. So all those reshoots and stuff has not been, like, I guess, was it Joker and stuff that wasn't in the original Right, yeah, Snyder these, cut. these four minutes are in addition to the stuff that was cut out originally. So, so it could be, like two hours or something they added from right yeah it's going to be about out. two hours of different footage and then these four minutes are on top of that okay yeah so okay so it's kind of adding on to the show <laughs> yeah this is stuff that wasn't in Zack Snyder's original plan maybe all the black and white footage they put in <laughs> yeah yeah, speaking of, they released a new trailer for the Justice League, and it's basically the exact same trailer, but black and white, and allegedly there's, like, two seconds of new footage. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's probably a different cut somewhere. Yes. It's the reshoot footage. Yes. <laughs> I should just put all the, re the four minutes of reshoot footage in the trailer, so there you go. That works. Okay, then the final thing I have, I don't have, like I said, I didn't have very much for movie news. Uh, apparently Wonder Woman 1984 will be released on HBO Max, as, a, as streaming on HBO Max, while it's coming out on the same day in theaters. If theaters are even open at the same time. <laughs> right. And no extra cost. Yeah, that's the most impressive part. Yeah, that is the pretty good thing. It's not the Disney way of charging $30 on top of your subscription costs. Yeah. HBO Max knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, because I know. Put it on there. Right. I know HBO Max is, like, struggling to find viewers. So I think this could probably do it. 
because so far I haven't gotten HBO Max, but I'm definitely getting it in December because of this. Yeah, same here. I'm like, because I wanted to see Wonder Woman 1984 when it came out. Well, I saw it on the Dorito bag. Right, three yeah. Ago. <laughs> You've been waiting, like, <laughs> four ago. most of the year for this because of the Dorito yeah. tie in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're going to see how they're going to weave in nacho cheese in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's probably, that's probably a good strategy. I think that's a very good, decent strategy from DC's part and HBO Max's part. Yeah, because it it won us over so i mean that's that's at least two new subscribers yeah i'm sure it's a lot more people than that i know a lot of people are waiting i'm assuming a lot of people are still waiting for the zack snyder cut what like what is the zack snyder cut supposed to come out it's supposed to come out like it's next like year or something yeah it's like may or june or something okay so it's supposed to hold people this is hopefully tries to hold people over until then well but I guess they have a bunch of shows that are pretty Yeah, decent. HBO has shows that I've wanted to watch, but I've been holding off because it was I didn't think it was worth it to spend. Because the thing is, HBO Max is a very pricey um, streaming service. Because it's like $15 a month or something, which is twice what Disney Plus is. Yeah, that's quite a bit. But, if they're doing stuff like dropping brand new DC movies and stuff, then it's going to be worth it. Because $15 yeah. is how much one ticket is for the movies in some places. Yeah, exactly. So, you know. And you can watch it at your house, and if you have like a good setup or something, it might even be worth it more than even going to the theater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like risk getting coronavirus or watch it at home. Yep. It's always a, a conundrum, I guess. <laughs> right. And if it's available in both formats, then just stay at yeah. home. I'm surprised they like haven't done this before, to be honest. It took them this long to be like, we need a brand, we need to put a big name movie on our streaming service. <laughs> well, I mean, they've been especially since they were kept pushing them back so much. Yeah, they've been going back and forth on this for a while. I mean, this was rumored that this was going to happen months ago, and it's like they finally just decided to pull the trigger on it. Yeah, they probably saw that the theaters are probably not going to open anytime, or at least most theaters aren't going to open anytime soon. So. Right. So we'll just put it into the remaining theaters that are open. I guess that's a good. I think that's a good. That's a good thing. I kind of hope they do that with some other things, like maybe Disney Plus can mm -hmm. not be so stupid and make charge people extra. Thirty on top of their, Well, on top of their streaming service costs. Yeah, Disney Plus is going to respond to this, but they have to figure out a way to do it without looking like they're trying to copy Warner Brothers. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. Because I heard that they're the live action, like, it sounds like they're going to drop stuff that's, like, some people were probably excited for, but not that many. Like, so far, Black Widow's not on the table for this. Yeah. It might eventually be, but as of now, the rumor I heard was that they were going to drop, like, the Cruella de Vil movie and, like, junk like that. Oh, wow. Movie. Yeah, it's like I think Emma Emma Stone or something is playing Cruella Deville. Um, oh, like they're stupid live action Disney movies. It's the ones that always suck. <laughs> yeah, they might drop those for free on Disney Plus, but I don't think they're willing to do Black Widow just yet. Yeah, they're probably Marvel movies. They probably will hold off. Unless theaters not open. Yeah, like, theaters uh, don't open at yeah. all, then yeah. Like, we need to put it on something, because we need to recoup some of our losses, I guess, but... Yeah. That's like, that's like I said, I think we talked about this before, but that's like the only bad thing about them doing this. It, like, pushes all, like, phase, whatever phase this is, back. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, even longer to get to the next major Marvel event, I guess. Yeah. Which is unfortunate but it's gonna have to happen all right so i guess i will uh continue off of that so since we just stopped with uh disney plus stuff talk about marvel some more so black panther 2 there was a little bit of news 
So apparently they're not going to do a CGI recreation of Chadwick Boseman, which I think most people would agree is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the conundrum still stands as to what do you do with the character. And there hasn't been a confirmation yet, but it seems like most people are leaning towards that they may actually just recast and keep uh, T'Challa as the main character, at least for the second movie. And then uh, possibly shift it, like, in the third movie or something, if there is one. So, Which is the only thing that kind of makes sense. <laughs> right, because she's still too inexperienced to just take on the mantle of Black Panther right now. So they, they, it seems like they're going to just recast Chadwick Boseman as a different actor and then just go from there because the delay is not significant i guess the it's only been delayed like three or four months from its original oh, okay. filming date well, yeah that's not too much considering your lead actor died yeah <laughs> like a three month delay is not super extreme yeah. <laughs> um, the next thing is that Deadpool 3 is officially in development. So, oh, yeah, I think I, did, I think I did read about that somewhere. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is back on, obviously. Um, they're giving the writing to the Molino sisters who do a lot of writing for uh, Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Great. So, um... <laughs> How that translates to Deadpool, I guess we'll find out. I wonder if they're going to keep the R rating or not. When I, uh, I it's, know that's a big, big, contention, or big contention. It's sounding very likely that they will. Okay. Because Disney seems to be trying to open up more of a mature market. And there's rumors that there's going to be like a, like a mature section to Disney Plus or... Oh, something like that as well and piggybacking off of that uh predator 5 has also been greenlit officially oh jeez how did how did that movie get <laughs> well here's the thing it's blast. not following the predator at all okay and this one is directed by dan trachtenberg who did uh 10 cloverfield lane and some other films uh, it's being written by Patrick Ason, who doesn't have a whole like a whole lot of credentials, but AVPGalaxy.net, which is kind of like the the go to Predator fan site, had some interesting stuff to say about it. So they said 20th Century Studios has engaged 10 Cloverfield Lane director Dan Trachtenberg to direct the fifth installment in the Predator series. The script is being written by Patrick Ason, who is producer. Writer credits include the series Kingdom, Jack Ryan, and Treadstone. So this was reported on Deadline, and Deadline wasn't able to go into specifics about the plot, but AVP Galaxy actually has some more information on it. A cycle of discussing film exclusively announced back in December of last year that Trachtenberg was developing a film with 20th Century Studios and Disney called Skulls that was written by Patrick Ason and it was to be or was supposed to be produced by longtime Predator series producer John Davis. So this is sounding like this could have been possibly this Skulls movie could have possibly been like the working title. For Predator yeah. 5. But here's the plot of Skulls, supposedly. Skulls will follow a Comanche woman who goes against gender norms and traditions to become a warrior. That was the very general idea. So the small bit of information marries up with what Alien vs. Predator Galaxy was told regarding the upcoming Predator 5. According to our own sources, Predator 5 will be set in the past where it'll focus around Native Americans before the territories were taken by American settlers. Oh. Featuring a First Nations cast. Which, so it's going to be Comanche versus Yaucha. Oh. <laughs> which, I'm cool with that. That sounds good to me. Yeah, that doesn't sound too bad. Because... <laughs> 
I think something people have always wanted to see is a Predator film set in the past. Like, uh... Yeah, especially something like that. That would actually be kind of interesting. Yeah, Predators versus some kind of warrior. Because, like, we get a, a small dose of that in Predators when they have, like, the Yakuza guy versus the Predator. And there's this scene where... Like, the Yakuza guy goes full samurai with his katana fighting a predator in the tall grass. And it was like, I want a movie of just samurai fighting predators or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Comanche Warrior versus Predator. I I could go with that. Yes. <laughs> That'll work. That would be pretty decent. So, yeah, if that's true, then that sounds a lot better than the last one. Yes, <laughs> the last one was like no joke one of the worst movies we've ever seen in the theater yeah that was i don't think i've ever seen anyone walk out of the theater in that one we actually had someone yeah we had somebody walk walk out out of the theater i think you and i both were like what is happening the entire movie yeah it was bad because it's it's very confusing and We've referenced these guys before, but like if people don't know about Red Letter Media, there's this really cool site on uh, YouTube, do movie reviews and all that kind of stuff. And uh, one of the guys on Red Letter Media, Jay Bauman, had the greatest quote in history with regards to the Predator. Little known fact, this is a technological breakthrough. It's a new technique being used in movies, which is that uh, this entire film was edited with a weed whacker. <laughs> I definitely stand by that statement. Like the editing in that movie is more more so than anything else. The editing for me is what killed that movie. Yes. Cuz it makes no sense. It just jumps from scene to scene with like no connective tissue at all. It's just all over the place. Yeah, it's really really bad. I'm not sure how that even got past some of the stuff, but it was just really bad. Especially Predator yeah, it's very clearly that there was a lot of, like, post-production reshooting and shifting around by the studio. Yeah, well, that's probably a probably studio involvement screwed it up like they always do. Yeah, and I'm sure the, the new version is not going to have, like, the subplot of the Predators trying to steal our autism or anything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or the Iron Man Predator suit at the end. Yeah, Iron Man Predator suit to fight Predators. Yeah, and the Predator was, like, trying to give us this as a gift the entire time, except for he kept murdering everybody that came near him. killing everyone for no reason. (laughs) I was like, that's not how you greet someone, I guess. Yeah, (laughs) and it's like, we've seen in the past that the species is intelligent. Like, they're not just mindless monsters. Like, they, they can reason. They're a highly intelligent race. They have advanced technology and all this stuff. And it's just like, this guy's, like... I'm going to give these humans an advanced technology just so they can fight our rival predator race, but I'm just going to, yeah. I can't stop my basic urge to murder them on sight. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? So, yeah, that was, that was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. It was like, they took a bunch of ideas from predators, but then they did it worse in every way. Uh, yeah. Because Predators has the concept of rival Predator races fighting each other. Except for it's done much better in that movie. And then it has the Predator dogs too. Except for they're way better in that movie as well. Yes. Nobody shoots one in the head to make it good. Yeah, make it good, yeah. It's like, what? Shooting in the head to make it good. <laughs> right, yeah, that's how bullets work. Yes. Alright, so that's all I have for Disney... And then we covered the DC stuff already, so I guess I'll just continue on that path, talk about some more HBO Max stuff. So there is a Spanish horror series called 30 Coins coming out for HBO Max. It's a HBO Europe production, so I guess HBO Max is going to start doing like Netflix does and have a lot of international programs. But uh, this is a religious horror film. So, like, one of the main characters is a priest. And looks like there's, like, demons or some kind of monsters involved. So. Yeah, that, might, that sounds like it might be kind of interesting. 
especially being like a, a Spanish religious horror film, which I don't know how Spanish horror films are, but um, they do tend to put in like a lot of Catholic themes. Oh, okay. Into things because like the their found footage zombie movie wreck that was like very popular. Uh, that has a strong like demon factor to it oh, okay that you don't typically see in zombie films since zombies are usually like a virus or something oh yeah zombie virus <laughs> yeah in this case it was like a, a zombie yeah in this case it was more of a uh, demonic possession or something Okay, so here's the synopsis for 30 coins, and this is why I wanted to pull this up, because this our lead character is interesting. 30 coins takes viewers into a world where nothing is as it seems, and nobody can be trusted. The eight-episode drama series follows Father Vegara, an exorcist boxer and ex-convict. <laughs> Exorcist boxer, ex-convict. Who is exiled by the church as the priest of a remote town in Spain. As his past and old enemies come back to haunt him, strange things begin to happen. An unlikely task force forms as Mayor Paco and local vet Elena seek the truth, while reality is distorted by a cursed coin which is at the heart of a global conspiracy. So, nice. it sounds possibly interesting. Sounds very convoluted as well but we'll yeah, see yeah it does sound like it has sounds a little complicated <laughs> it was like what is okay so i'll it'll be interesting to see if this actually makes any sense but it does look like it has cool creatures yeah especially i guess if the effects and stuff are pretty nice with the boxer ex-convict <laughs> yes <laughs> he's gonna punch the demons out. i think mean, Keanu's John Constantine basically did that, so. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's what they're following. Just punch the demons out into a mirror. Yes, exactly. Just like he did. <laughs> Alright, and then uh, continuing with HBO Max, The Last of Us, the video game series, is getting adapted into an HBO Max series. Or HBO series, I don't know if it's HBO Max or not, but. Yeah, it probably will be because it's like they probably want to try to get their streaming service all bolstered up so probably that would probably be a good addition to it yeah and then i guess season one is going to adapt the first game which is not terribly surprising the one that people like <laughs> yes not the second game which everyone like likes or either likes it or just absolutely hates it right all right so that was it for hbo max news for the week and then uh do like one-off studio stuff so universal the dark universe is rising its ugly head once again i guess there is an untitled universal monster project with a <laughs> his uh directors are phil lord and chris miller who are most famous for being kicked off a solo movie <laughs> for disney <Yes. laughs> um and of course actually making films as well like 21 jump street series and stuff but uh they're in the lego movie i believe but uh they're attached to this and apparently channing tatum is attached as the star but what this universal monster is nobody knows so, like they haven't said so we don't know if this is a frankenstein movie or a werewolf movie or yeah that sounds like it'd be like a frankenstein movie creature from the black or... lagoon who knows nobody knows it's one of the one of those things universe is still going <laughs> yes in some form or if it's gonna be connected together or not i guess i don't, really... I don't think it... the only question yeah it may be standalone things because I think these are going off the success of uh, Invisible Man. Yeah. Um, Alright, so moving on past that was it for Universal. So Sony very little bit of news Monster Hunter got pushed up to a Christmas release. 
so it's competing directly really? yeah it's competing directly with wonder woman however it's not going to any streaming service it's a theatrical only thing so it basically has zero chance of making any money <laughs> great <laughs> but it's not getting released in january they're very adamant that it's not coming out in january not in january they moved it ahead <laughs> a week Christmas. To keep it even farther from January. Put in Christmas. I didn't realize they were like done with that movie. I thought they were still filming, but I guess. Nah, I think they're done. And they did release a new trailer for it. But I didn't watch the trailer, but from what I heard it, uh, they're putting in more stuff from the games showing up in those trailers. Oh, okay. And the only bad thing about Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter is like a very grindy game. Yeah. I don't know how they're gonna do it. It's like a how what type of narrative you're gonna really have, but I guess Rathalos is the big thing everyone talks about. Yes, you could always do an '80s montage of grinding. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's that's true. Have them like cutting up animals and stuff, and making like armor. Yeah, for like a five-minute montage. Yeah. <laughs> of them cutting, the chopping up animals, experience. <laughs> pulling their bones out for armor. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that was it about that. It was just, uh, they pushed it ahead a week. Which is, like, unheard of these days. It's gonna be, like, the only movie that went ahead a week instead of back. Yeah, instead of back, away from going forward into coronavirus, instead of back. <laughs> yes. Away from coronavirus. Okay, so Shudder, horror streaming service, announced that they're... They got the rights to The Reckoning. So The Reckoning is Neil Marshall's new horror film. Uh, Neil Marshall is famous for being the director of Dog Soldiers and The Scent. And also the terrible Hellboy movie. (laughs) But that last Hellboy movie, I still stand by that was... uh, kind of a victim of reshoots in the same sort of way as Predator. Yeah. Seems like a lot of of times they have reshoots and stuff that, like, screws the movie up. (laughs) Yeah, that one definitely looked like studio meddling again. Yes. But anyway, the, The Reckoning is a period horror film set against the backdrop of the Great Plague that takes place during witch hunts in 17th century England. And it follows Evelyn Haverstock, a young widow haunted by the recent suicide of her husband, Joseph, who is falsely accused of being a witch by her jealous landlord, Squire Pendleton, after she rejects his unwanted advances. Must endure physical persecution at the hands of England's most ruthless witch hunter, Judge Moorcroft, who's played by Sean Pertwee, who is from Dog Soldiers and event horizon also played uh alfred in the gotham show and is the son of john pertwee who is the third doctor in doctor who so he's a pretty good actor and uh face her own inner demons as the devil himself starts to work his way into her mind so um definitely sounds interesting uh, I really like Neil Marshall's early works, like Dog Soldiers and Descent. I don't know so much about his newer stuff, but yeah, his his early stuff was good. And it's in England. He's an English director, so, so at least yeah, that could be interesting. At least promising, given the yeah. setting and the the concept and stuff. It seems a bit like The Witch, that movie that came out like a couple years ago. It's like The Pilgrim horror movie <laughs> yeah. but probably well, like l- probably less artsy than that i doubt it's gonna be in period english or anything but yeah it's probably gonna be like uh just a setting <laughs> right uh so yeah that one definitely looks interesting and i usually cover stuff that's on shutter so whenever that comes out i'll probably do a review for it and then uh, moving on to other streaming service stuff, we've got some Netflix news. So Stranger Things Season 4 has a bunch of new cast members. Oh yeah, I think I did read about that somewhere. It's like, wasn't it like 8 new cast members or something? It's like some insane amount. 
Yeah, there's like eight new guys in here. And uh the most interesting one, of course, is Robert England is joining the cast who Oh yeah, I think I read that one. That's gonna be depending on what they're gonna do, I wonder what they're gonna fo- focus on if it's kinda like that type of these horror elements that would be kind of interesting <laughs> yeah we have some plot synopsis for it here so uh robert england most famous of course for playing freddy krueger in the nightmare on elm street movies he plays a reoccurring role of victor creel a disturbed and intimidating man who is imprisoned in a psychiatric hospital for a gruesome murder in the 1950s so that's his deal okay but he seems like he might be kind of a Freddy Krueger character because yeah. it's a gruesome murder in the 1950s. So it's probably going to be kind of an urban legend kind of thing in Hawkins. Yeah. And possibly involving the parents of the kids. So, you know, that that's going to bring up some very heavy Freddy Krueger vibes. Yeah, it does have that feeling to it. Okay, and then the the other regulars. So we have Jamie Campbell Bower will play Peter Ballard, a caring man who works as an orderly at a psychiatric hospital. Okay, so he's going to be part of that. Yeah, he's part of that plot. Tired of the brutality he witnesses day after day, will Peter finally take a stand? He's possibly the reason why Robert England's character becomes a threat, because he could do something to try to... Releases them or something. Yeah, I mean, either releases him or he tries to stop him or something and inadvertently causes him to get released. And then uh, we have Eduardo Franco, who will play Argyle, Jonathan's new best friend. A fun-loving stoner who proudly delivers delicious pizza pies for Surfer Boy Pizza. It's <laughs> <This is> great. <laughs> Sounds like a, a riveting character there. Uh, Joseph Quinn will play Eddie Munson, an audacious 80s metalhead who runs the Hellfire Club, Hawkins High's official D&D club. <laughs> what? Uh, there we go. <laughs> Got the heavy metal D&D club. Hated by those who don't understand him and beloved by those who do, Eddie will find himself at the terrifying epicenter of this season's mystery. Uh, so he's like the focus point. Okay. Yeah, so we'll see what he's up to. And then we got reoccurring characters. Sherman Augustus will play Lieutenant Colonel Sullivan, an intelligent, no-nonsense man who believes he knows how to stop the evil in Hawkins once and for all. And then you got Mason Die will play Jason Carver. Carver seemingly has it all. He's handsome, he's rich, he's a sports star, and he's dating the most popular girl in the school. But as a new evil threatens Hawkins, Jason's perfect world begins to unravel. He sounds like he might be in place of uh, the lifeguard dude from season three. Billy or whatever. Yeah. Could I be... didn't hear Billy was supposed to be in there like somewhere. Maybe like a flashback. Yeah, it could be a flashback because he's not on this list. But then again, he wouldn't be a new character. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got Nikola Yuritsko. It will play Yuri. A seedy and unpredictable Russian smuggler who loves bad jokes, cold hard cash, and crunchy style peanut butter. (laughs) Interesting trait. Yes. He likes peanut butter. His Yuri's main trait is he likes peanut butter. (laughs) And then Tom Vlashiha will play Dmitri, a Russian prison guard who befriends Hopper. Dmitri is smart, cunning, and charming. But can he be trusted? So basically they confirmed Hopper was supposed to be in this season. Even though it's like people were talking about that. Like, well, Hopper's in the trailer. So I would think it's kind of confirmed. Oh, I guess I didn't watch the trailer. So I didn't know. Yeah, there's like a, te- there's a teaser trailer they released like months back. And the, t- oh, okay. the teaser was literally just Hopper in Kamchatka. Like in a prison colony or something predicting that the longest time it's like, yeah. okay, that was very predictable yeah so that's what's going on with season 4 of Stranger Things we don't know anything about the plot but we ended up getting a bunch of new characters there's like 8 new characters 
which is a lot. That's kind of crazy. That's a lot of characters. Yeah, especially for basically like one season. Because how many, how long is Stranger Things supposed to go for? Like probably eight episodes or something. Two seasons max, and then that, they said they were gonna like end the show or something. Yeah, this might even be the last season. I don't know. Yeah, I guess to that one character saying about he knows a way to actually stop the evil at all, like once and for all. So right. Yeah, that might be. It might just be the end of last season, which they probably should just end it eventually. So. Well, they have to invent it eventually, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. But I know Millie Bobby Brown was talking about she sounded like this could be the end, or at least the second to last season, or something. It's definitely winding down. Yeah, especially when actors are getting older and stuff. It's like they need to go do some other stuff instead of making Stranger Things. Shows. Right. Yeah. So definitely interesting. I really like the last season. Of Stranger Things, so I'll definitely watch this one. Yeah, that was a good season. Yeah, definitely watch this one. Okay, and then continuing with Netflix, uh, Extraction, the action movie with Chris Hemsworth, uh, apparently won the E's People's Choice Award for Best Action Movie Star. So Chris Hemsworth got that award. But oh, there you go. And it was also nominated for the Critics' Choice Super Awards, which sounds made up, but... <laughs> Yeah, it, does. <laughs> it was nominated for best action movie and best actor in an action movie Great. so lots of action movie but the interesting thing about this is chris hemsworth uh made a video on his instagram and he talked about obviously thanking people for nominating him but he said that the interesting thing was that him and uh the director's for it we're gonna try to make a couple more for you guys so it sounds like they wanted to make a couple sequels to it because we knew there was one sequel in the works Mm -hmm. but he said a couple more so sounds like possibly two or more maybe i should just make like at least a trilogy or something right like a lot of these movies are trilogies so yeah kind of a john wick type thing it's yeah. um it feels like John Wick. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but the the action is like on that level. I think it was on it's on my watch list, but I haven't got to it. <laughs> yeah, I watched it when I first Netflix is like always like like that way. <laughs> oh yeah, my 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 watch list is like never ending. Yeah. <laughs> but uh I watched it when it came out. The action's really good. It's like John Wick level stuff. But it's Chris Hemsworth, and he's just, like, beating up a bunch of, like, dudes that are two feet shorter than him. <laughs> so, uh, there we go. <laughs> so it's, like, John Wick level, but Thor. So he's, like, there, at times he's literally, like, picking people up and, like, throwing them through the ceiling and stuff. Nice. <laughs> so it, it's pretty crazy. But, yeah, I definitely would. The only thing is... Not to give spoilers or whatever, but it seems like a very definitive ending with very little chance of a sequel. So they may have to either retcon the ending or give us a prequel to it or something. So I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I guess there's going to have okay. a, there's going to be at least a sequel. Yeah. So it's not, uh, it's not like they're moving forward without him and making a spinoff movie or something. It sounds like it is a direct sequel to it. So we'll see. All right, and then the last thing I had was a little movie called Black Friday. So it says, set on the busiest shopping night of the year, it follows a group of disgruntled toy store employees who have to defend themselves from legions of holiday shoppers when a mysterious alien parasite sends them on a murderous rampage. (laughs) (laughs) That was kind of interesting. That actually sounds pretty fun. (laughs) It sounds good. It's kind of like... I don't know if you've seen the movie, but there's a, there's a movie called Cooties and it's like this, except for the main character is like a substitute teacher and the kids in the school all get infected. So it's like the teachers have to fight the kids. <laughs> I haven't seen that one, but it does sound kind of interesting. It's pretty funny. I definitely recommend it. Uh, Elijah Wood is the substitute teacher. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit like, uh, like the faculty and stuff like that except for even more of a comedy like it's it's pretty funny but uh this one obviously a comedy 
and it's starring Devon Sawa, Michael J. White, and Bruce Campbell. Oh no! Okay, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I wonder if it's gonna be the place he works at in the uh, Evil Dead. Uh, it might be. <laughs> Thing. maybe it's the <laughs> evil dead universe maybe like 20 years later or something he made manager at the store or something yeah, it's like fighting off alien alien zombies shoppers. yeah <laughs> it's like nice that, 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 kind of, that one does kind of sound like something i kind of want to watch yeah i, de- <laughs> I definitely want to see that i don't know who's like what studio or whatever's making it but yeah it sounds fun <laughs> And I guess filming started yesterday, so it's in active production. Oh, good. All right, so that was that's all I got for movie news for this week. So if you like what you heard, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and stay tuned for part two where we discuss the video game news for the week. Hope to see you then. Bye.